Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. We are going to dive into marketing today. There's a lot of fluff out there. And my guest today, Nikki Dibbins, who is my dear friend from the UK and a marketing genius, is going to share her wisdom with us and some new perspectives. And we're going to take out the fluff. We're going to focus on what needs to be at the core of your marketing plan, which I'm going to give you a hint, does involve your values and so much more. Without further ado, Nikki Dibbins, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hello, Robin. Thank you so much for having me. It's lovely. It's always lovely when we chat. I always enjoy our chats. Yes, me too. You're such a ray of sunshine, even though you're in the UK and there's probably not a ton of sunshine right now, but... (laughs) It is thunderstorming at the moment, so it's great fun. Uh huh. And it's a gray, rainy day here as well, so not dissimilar for sure. So, Nikki, before we jump into this really juicy, meaty conversation, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you, your journey to get to where you are today? Yeah, sure. So, I started life as a computer scientist. My first degree is in computer science, and then. I did that and then realized that, you know, of all the things I wanted to be, a computer scientist wasn't one of them. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And as it turns out, my first ever job was actually in intellectual property management, which was all about just taking completely mad and mad inventions from academia and then trying to place them in commercial environments. So everything from airplane glue to some speech recognition for um, visually impaired people we would take these mad inventions and we would place them you know, in commercial world so it was properly it was called the technology broker and that was literally what we did we brokered technologies so then I sort of I learned marketing in the kind of non-conventional way and had a variety of, of marketing jobs and then as so often happens I was working for a tech company in Cambridge and I was marketing manager and they got acquired by a company in the States, which is what happens to a lot of my clients, which is absolutely fine. But what then happens is that they kind of go, that's lovely. We've got all our people. Could you just be the coloring in department in the corner? And I said, no, that's not going to happen. Um, so I left one day in a fit of peak, as you do. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Again, this seems to be the, the story of my life. I serendipitously, you know, bumble my way along. And then somebody quite senior from Vodafone rang and they wanted me to do some regulatory research for them. And they were my first ever client. So 24 years later, with the exception of three years being VP marketing in a global telecoms equipment company, I've been working for myself as a consultant. I love it. I love it. And you guys, I want to encourage you to follow Nikki on LinkedIn because she puts out such great content. It's so good. And she's got a great sense of humor too. And that does shine (laughs) through in her content. So, but she has a lot of value that she provides. And we're going to dive into a lot of that today. So Nikki, I know you have a like nine module kind of platform or uh, method that you use. And I don't know that we're going to spend a lot of time diving deep into that. We're going to take some of that and we're going to like divulge where marketing is fluffy and where we need to step out of the fluff and into what really does matter when it comes to marketing. Exactly. I mean, it's yes, it's nine modules and I call it my 360 degree marketing framework. But the reason for this is that I try to draw it. I try to draw marketing in a straight line. And I end up just getting figure eight after figure eight after figure eight and all sorts of different angles. And I realize that's because it's not linear. It's it's holistic. It's global. It has this whole 360 degree thing to it. So it's not important that people go, oh, she's got nine modules and she's got 27 things, because what is more important is that you actually do what is right for your business. So the first thing we always do is look at an individual business. And if they're quite well established, we pick the three things that are going to make a real difference to their business. If they're a slightly younger company, then they usually usually are the similar three things which form the middle in the middle circle of my um my 360 framework. And that is really focused around. I use the word strategy with a small s because it's really what it is. It's about three things that um, are not fluffy. Um, it's about your your business authority and your point of view. So what what can you say? What do you stand for in the marketplace? Basically, this is where we're going to come back to values in a minute. Then a really good diagram that just sums up your entire business. If you can't sum up your entire business in one sensible diagram, be that a matrix or a ladder or some Venn diagrams, then you haven't quite articulated, you know, you, you don't really understand your business well enough. And thirdly, just 
a really brief understanding of who are you mapping your customers to your products and services. Now, if you have those three things in place, then everything else that you do is either input into that or output from that or just kind of hangs around that because there are three really good things that every business should should know um, to get them moving, really. Absolutely. And this does tie into your values, right? Because you can spend a plethora of time doing all of these things, but if they aren't aligned with your values and your visions for your business and the way you want to serve your people or provide a product for your people, it's not going to thrive. It's not. And one of the first things that I always talk about, the word success always comes up every time you talk about a business. And I always say success in terms of what that means to you. Because one person's success is not the next person's success. And that also ties in really really well with values. So the two the two things that people tend to sort of talk about most often when it comes to, to, to marketing and strategy as a whole are on the one hand, it's the it's the vision and the mission and all that good stuff, which is all very well, but can get quite ethereal, ethereal shall we say, you know, quite quite woolly. And then on the other hand, launching straight into just tactical activities. But both of those are, are the extremes. Without this this robust you know, framework in the middle, that you've got nothing to anchor those two. And the values fall really, really, really strongly into, I do what I call like a, a manifesto, because it's not the, the big weighty tome of what's my long-term vision and my, you know, et cetera, et cetera, because that just takes up so much time and effort and energy. So a manifesto is really, what are my values? What's my purpose and what hills am I prepared to die on? Which again sort of comes back to values, but it's quite it's quite a good manifestation of that. What will I not accept? And that then wraps around when we start talking about a point of view and a business authority and a business framework diagram, your values wrap around that because because they will be included in how you you draw up your your diagram for your business. And I, I had one client, we did a very lovely sort of circular diagram for their business. And it was really clear that their values wrapped all the way around this. And they said to me, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about the other? And I'm like, well, your products and services are in here. And you, you can see that your values wrap around it. And they said, well, oh, yes, but we want to offer such and such as well. And I said, well, you can really clearly see that that has no place in your in your business diagram. And that's because we've wrapped your values around it. And what you want to do directly contradicts the values that you've just espoused of transparency and accountability and et cetera, et cetera. So that's why there's no place for this in this in this business diagram so your values are great because they they're from both they're both a you know a, a a fence to keep things in and they're also a fence to keep things out and so you've got to look at it from both both directions mm, and i love that because when we're not aligned with our values we don't have clarity because we're trying to do all these things that don't feel good to us because they aren't aligned. And the same thing with working with people and just taking on any client that comes your way. If they aren't aligned with your values, you're not going to be able to number one, feel fulfilled when working with them. You're going to be frustrated, but two, you're not going to be able to serve them the way they need to be served. So it's really important to look at your values. And I know a lot of people haven't done the exercise like to discover what their core values are. And I like to start there because if you're going to create messaging and content around your business to market your business, you need to know what you stand for and where you're going to put your stake in the ground, where you're not willing to waver. And I think it's really important to just have that concrete knowledge of, okay, this is who I am and this is who what my business is going to be. And this is how I'll now tell the story of my business because it makes sense and it's aligned. So I do want to say, and I'll put a link in the show notes too, to I love um, James Clear, the, the gentleman that wrote Atomic Habits. He has yeah. a great list of core values on his website that you can go to. And what I always suggest, and we've had other episodes about values and I'll link those in the show notes too, but I think if you're going to create a marketing strategy, it's got to start with your values. And like Nikki said, because that is the core, that's the foundation, that's the center. But anyway, he's got a list. And if you take a look at that list, what I always suggest is you're probably going to see a lot of words on out of 50 words that he has on that list that you're going to resonate with. 
narrow it down to 20. Then from 20, see where there are words that kind of are duplicative and then choose the one that best fits you and what you believe in, what you stand for. And from that 20, narrow it down to 10 and then get it down to like three to five. And it may take you a few different go-throughs to actually, or pass-throughs to, to actually see what your core values are, but get it down to three to five because that's then what's going to be the mainstay for all of your marketing and your messaging and how you communicate what makes you unique in the marketplace. It is. And, and what you can do from a business perspective and from a marketing perspective is start expanding on those values. So they're not just single words, but you can actually make them into um, sentences by adding a verb, or you can make them into, you can just start um, interrogating them. So say, which means that, or which we demonstrate in our business by. And so you start getting a bit more depth and a bit more nuance to these values. So like, for instance, and my, my fundamental rule of values as well is don't say things that nobody in the world wants to put an on in front of. So don't say trustworthy because no company's going to go, my value is being untrustworthy. You know, don't say reliable because no company's going to go, ah, oh, we pride ourselves on our unreliability. So try and think of things that, so, I mean, one of my clients, they, they, they started off with the word diversity and we ended up talking about championing diversity and then saying, well, that, which means that, well, what does that mean in our business? It means that, you know, while the, the, this particular lady was, she called herself, this is her, her, her own title, you know, a, a strong brown female founder. And they're, they're her words, not mine. And she, and what in terms of championing diversity, what that meant was we still had to have a fundamental business model that made our business investable in um, and made people interested. But, but she had this underlying current of, you know, championing diversity wherever she went and being a good role model for, for people around her, you know, and, so you can start to really put your values into action that way and, and realize that they're more than just, you know, some words on a wall. You can actually say, you know, this is how we embody this in our day to day business. And therefore, this is how we can talk about it. And once you can bring your values to life, it's much easier to start talking about them. So I don't say anywhere, you know, my values are integrity and hard work and reliability and doing what. But but I like to feel that kind of shines through the way I communicate, the way I talk, the way that I am always on time for meetings, the way that if I say I'll do something, I do it. The fact that, you know, if somebody else screws up, I'll go out of my way to fix it for them. You know, you still need boundaries. That's the other opposite to values, of course. You know, you, you need your boundaries in place as well. But, you know, I, you, you have to live your values. You can't just, you know, put them on a post-it note on your wall. Yeah, I agree. It, there's a lot to be said for that. If you aren't, if first of all, if you haven't recognized what your values are, you really can't live by them. But second of all, if you identify your values and you just have a list that you refer to periodically, that's not going to cut it. It has to be demonstrated throughout your business, the way you work with your clients, the messaging and content that you publish, how you show up wherever you show up, whether it's for PR or sales calls or whatever, all of that has to be demonstrated. And I love Nikki, how you said they can't be words that you can put in un, the UN in front of like unreliable, or untrustworthy, because you're right. Nobody's going to categorize themselves that way. So if it is a word like that, let's step away from that. And let's, let's choose words that we can truly demonstrate. I love the fact that you said that add the verb in front of it like championing, championing. I can't even say the word champ Let's do that. Let's do championing. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's not working. It's a Monday morning. Um, but yeah, try, you know, doing that, I think adds that depth to your values and then gives you that opportunity to shine through every day. So, okay, Nikki. So once we decide on our values, so let's talk about this. When we're creating a marketing strategy, how do you suggest anyone who surely most people have a marketing strategy or at least are marketing, but I think what happens a lot of times is they think they're marketing, but what they're doing is, and I'm going to use your word here, fluffy. So <laughs> they're creating a lot of content and they're putting it out there on social media or wherever, but it's fluff. It's not, it's not the core or the root or the foundation that it needs to be for long-term success mm -hmm. whatever you define success as yeah yeah I mean I think there's there's a couple of parts to that one is I think it's 
it's really important to understand your customer journey. Now, I do not like the phrase customer journey, but I've never been able to find a better one. So we're kind of stuck with that. So it's being aware, you know, aware of where people are on the, on their, their customer journey and target, you know, making sure that what you do on every step of that journey aligns with, with where they are. So for instance, I had a client the other day and they couldn't work out why they couldn't go straight from hello to will you come to this fancy schmancy event? And I'm like, well, because that's just, it's just going you know you just just one leap too far and a uh, vastly oversimplified has broken down into two for them which is you have to go in fact i've got a linkedin post coming out you know shortly about this is you have to go from inertia or apathy or not knowing about you to a willingness to engage and then you have to go from a willingness to engage to actually a willingness to really properly talk to you and be interested in what you have to say now the first half of that is often about education it's not actually about you doesn't matter who you are it, what you're taught what you have to do is educate your customers to the fact that this entire market exists and the fact that the problems that they are seeking have solutions it's not about you it's about educating the market and then the second half is then about differentiating yourself f- from what else is out there in the market so if you can split what you do at its most basic into you know education and awareness and then differentiation and making it easy for people to choose you then that's just that you and then you map that to where people are on the on the funnel. And it, it sounds more complicated than it really is because the, the, the upshot of it is if nobody's heard of not if nobody's heard of you, they're not going to buy from you. But even if they have heard of you, they're not going to buy from you. You have to break it down and, and make it step by step and, and nurture them along that, you know, again, funnel, again, not my favorite word, but it, you know, it's 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 there for a reason, isn't it? You know. And the other thing I always say is that I think customers fall broadly into into four categories. And again, you see, I sort of fly against the face of, you know, most marketing because I just I really simplify it. Your customers are in four categories. They're yes, in which case, bite their hand off, sell them lots of stuff. They are a don't know, in which case you educate them. They are a maybe, in which case you differentiate what you're doing. Or there are no, in which case, why are you wasting your time? Because you've got another three categories of customer to go after. And it, it genuinely is that simple. Think about you know where customers hang out, what stage of the journey they're on, and therefore what you can do to just gently nurture them along. And remembering that throughout all of this, you'll never force anybody to buy from you. So so don't worry about it. It's about educating them, differentiating yourself, and being there when they're ready to buy. That's essentially what marketing is, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it goes so far beyond social media and ads on social media, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, it goes so much deeper and farther than that. And I think what you said about, first of all, it is about the client. It's about their perception and it's about how they feel and the relationship that you're building once they come into your community. And not everybody that comes into your community is going to be for you. It, or you're not going to be for them, but it's how you then differentiate yourself to kind of siphon those through, whether they stay in your, I'm going to use air quotes funnel, because I don't like the term funnel either. Every mm-hmm. time I hear the word funnel, I think of um, click funnels and that's not it. Like it's not always a sales funnel. There's the nurturing and it's the, the, the building that emotional connection so that you can build trust and trust is what's going to determine buying practices. So it's really important that once these people come into your community, then you can start building that emotional connection, the relationship, and you do that through differentiation. Absolutely. And it's about a transformation. You know, I always kind of say, so somebody challenged me on, oh, you know, is there one favorite business model that you've got? And I said, well, no, because businesses are different. You know, some of them we have a lovely two by two matrix, some of them we have some Venn diagrams. And I said, but some of them we have a ladder, but and it's I said, if you're really gonna force me, because what he was trying to do was get me to say there is only only one business model that fits every business. Now clearly that's just not true anyway. But I said, if you really at its most atomic level because 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 we're doing atomic today you know it's it's a straight line from a to b you know what is the transformation that you're taking a customer on what can they do after having you in their life that they could not do before and what's that transformation and then look at it in terms of a, a currency and a currency is always you know time or money or stress or something you can say i will give you more of this or less of that and that's fundamentally what what every business is all about so you know whether you're doesn't really matter, you know, selling a pair of shoes, well, I want to make you feel better and, and walk further, you know, whatever you're selling, you, you know, but it's, again, it's about, it's about relationships and it's about trust. And I think we both operate in a world where we're not about, you know, just selling anything to anybody, you know, we do, we want those relationships. And that's also where then you end up 
again, it comes down to values, but I would think some of the underlying values, you know, have got to be sort of the transparency and the openness and the, I mean, I, I get, you know, I'm not for everybody. I talk to some people and they're like, oh, well, you're, you're a bit too, you know, too tough love for me. And I'm like, well, so be it. That's how I operate. If you, if you can't listen to the truth from me, then you're not going to want to buy from me either. You know, and I actually turned down a piece of work this morning because I thought I could do it, but it's not really, really properly, you know, in my wheelhouse. So you've got to operate within your own sphere of integrity really and that if you don't you're only going to trip yourself up and you're going to get yourself to blame oh my gosh that's I love it every single thing that you said and I say that all the time and I think this Nikki is a great place to loop back to what you said in the beginning and that is that it's success is what you determine your success to be because we all have a different perception we're not all out there to grow to a billion dollars or a million dollars or high six figures and we see so much of this in people's marketing that it's like well okay I I'm here to serve and yes I want to make money I want to support my family and I want to do all these things but at the end of the day success to me is seeing that other people are experiencing results they're able to now, because of what I've taught them, have a bigger impact in the world. And mm -hmm. I think it's so important what you said. And I think, you know, we we talked about that, then we talked about the values, and now we're back here to really standing firm on what those things mean to you so that you are living in integrity, working in integrity, and not just taking on people for the next dollar. Yeah. And it's really, it's really tricky sometimes, but, and, but this is where this whole, the other sort of, I think the other side to the kind of this whole sphere of integrity, which I like, by the way, I might have to use that phrase for something I do because I like it, sphere of integrity, but it's kind of yeah, true. Yeah, I like it. You've got to operate in your zone of genius within your sphere of integrity. Um, But what I was going to say there is the, the other thing that I think is really, really important and, and very, very tricky is to, to operate from the spirit of abundance, even if you don't feel like it, because you know what? Information and wisdom is pretty much the only thing you can give away for free and yet still keep. And I live that way, whether I feel like it or not. There are days when I just feel like saying, nope, I'm not helping you. I'm not telling you anything. I'm not in the mood. And But you just don't know where the world is going to take you. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, operate from the sphere of abundance. And that the more you give, the more you get. Which Again, it all sounds terribly cheesy, but it... it the most cheesy things in life are generally the most true as well aren't they so it, you know and it, and it comes back in terms of you know to put it in sort of a you know a marketing mindset you can only do you can only do the marketing activities that feel right for you i mean you, you have to sometimes you have to step out of your comfort zone a little bit so for instance i recorded some videos the other day which scared me very scary very scared because it's not it's not my thing but I thought people like to hear me talk. They like to, you know, see my hands move. And so I, I kind of forced myself to do it. But I realized, OK, well, how can I do it in a way that works for me? Now, the way that it worked for me is that I am much, much better live than if I try and record something. So what I did was I got someone to interview me so that everything I did was live. Because if I sit there and I read a script, I sound really stilted and for some reason, dreadfully posh. And it just wasn't me. So you have to step out of your comfort zone, but not to a point you can stretch it but don't break it because if you break your comfort zone and you do something that just fundamentally makes you just feel incredibly icky you're not going to stick with it so you do have to you do have to stretch a little bit but don't don't break it so if you feel like well I could do this twice well then you could probably do it three times or if you feel like okay people have said I'm really really good um you know with with images okay well maybe how can imagery lend itself better in my social media right people have said I'm brilliant live okay how can I get on more podcasts right people have said I'm actually really 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 good at reading scripts which other people aren't so I know I'm going to spend a day just pre-recording a load of videos do what works within your own skill set because not everybody can or should do the same things the caveat to that is bear in mind that the recipient is your potential customer so it has to be somewhere they will see you and find you and trip over you there's no point in kind of going I only want to do Instagram when your customers are never there for instance uh -huh. you know if you decide to do some social media so you're still going to be where where your customers hang out but yeah. make yourself feel yeah. comfortable but get used to it yeah and I love that you said that because so many people were so we're taught that digital marketing is social media and there's so much more to digital marketing than social media so go where your people are, where are they going to find you? And I know Nikki, you and I both love LinkedIn and there are many reasons I like it, but it's also great for search engine optimization, but 
go where your people are and give them the information that they need to be able to understand you're the one for them. And that goes back to what Nikki said earlier about differentiating yourself and meeting them where they are and letting them know that you understand them and that it's about them, not just about you signing on another client. Absolutely. And ask them questions and and use their language. One of the things I like to do a lot, I talk about um, getting people to reflect back to you what you've said, not repeat back to you, but reflect back to you. Because if you say, you know, if you you explain something to somebody and just say well can you just you know reflect back to me what you think I've just said if they reflect it back to you then it shows they've they've understood it it also gives you more ways of talking about their problem and more language that possibly they might use that you might not and it'll be really obvious you know that that if you've used a word that you think is, is really obvious to you but they didn't understand it they will either explain that word back to you in a better way or if they just keep repeating the same word to you you can then start questioning well you know do you actually understand what that word means? I mean, in a, in a nice way, because it's like it's like with the pensions guy. I keep saying to him, you know, I understand your sentence. It's just the word in it that I'm having trouble with. So if you can get people to reflect back to you what you've said, then, you know, it gives you new ways of talking about things as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that that voice of customers should be forefront mm. in everything, everything you do, because that's how it's going to connect with them. So Nikki, this has been fabulous. You have just dropped a wealth of information on us and I love it so much because you're so succinct and to the point and I love it. Will you tell the listeners where they can find you, connect with you, maybe even work with you? Absolutely. Well, I am Nikki Dibbon on LinkedIn. I think there's only possibly only one of me. Um, and really, I mean, what I where I specialize is I, I call myself a, a CEO advisor and CMO in one, which sounds terribly grand. But what that really means is that there are a lot of businesses that as they're growing, they, they don't need a full time, you know, senior marketer in house. Um, but but having said that, I work with companies of all sizes. So everything I put on LinkedIn while I work one-on-one most closely with, you know, CEOs of tech companies and, and complex businesses, the advice trickles all the way through to, to you know, to, to one-person companies and founders, you know, solo founders and so on. So, for instance, when I talk about customer journey, I talk about four types of customer, I talk about values, I've done a whole series of posts on values. So it's applicable whether you're, you know, one person or a hundred people, because to me, marketing is, it's a state of mind and it's everything that comes between you and your customers. So whether you're one person or a hundred, it, it all holds, holds true. So yeah, find me on LinkedIn and I'm always happy to, to chat to people. Yeah, I love it. You're a wealth of information and I love your content on LinkedIn. There's never been a oh, post you, I didn't, didn't like or didn't agree with. So you do a great, <laughs> you do a really great job. It's good to all know. Right. I'm getting a little bit more opinionated as well, which can only be a good thing. well but you know what that differentiates you from everyone else like I I'm a no-nonsense person too and it's like okay Mm -hmm. if you're not ready to cut to the chase then you're not ready to work with me right I mean the reality is that we're here to help people and if people only want to be coddled they're not going to grow they're not going to achieve the results they want to achieve I mean I'm not mean I'm super super kind and funny and all that good stuff when working with my clients but At the same time, there's got to be accountability, right? And I think that's where you come from too. It's like, okay, if if you really want this to work, let's let's make it work. Let's not just definitely in the tough love, tough love category of of helping people because if you know if they don't want to help themselves, then I'm not doing it for them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. All right, listeners, I have loved every minute of this conversation, and I hope that you did too. Please follow Nikki because I am telling you, you will love her content. You can find her at LinkedIn. And I will also put the link to her website in the show notes for you so that you can easily access that. And I want to remind you that the Success Without Social Mastermind is live for applications. So get your application in now. The application deadline is October 5th. And we are limiting spaces because this is an intimate program. We're going to be I want to be able to give you the attention you deserve. So we're keeping the numbers small. And then also we are doing a webinar. Let's see, we have three dates. So go to my show notes, of of course, so that you can see the dates, the times and all of that juicy stuff so that you can join the webinar. We'll be talking about marketing strategies. We'll be talking about how 
how social media can be detrimental your, to your business and why, and then what you can do to get results ASAP instead of staying in this cycle of spinning out of control and investing in things that are not getting you results. So I will put the links to that in the show notes as well. There will be a plethora of other links to additional resources, blog posts, podcast episodes, et cetera, that you can refer to as well. All right. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. And I will see you next time.